Good day, fellow Jersey nerds, and welcome to episode 58 of the Jersey Nerds podcast, powered by HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. I'm your host, Ryan. Today on the Nerdcast, we're going to be talking about Seattle becoming the 32nd NHL franchise. Carolina and Anaheim are going to have a color versus color game, and the New York Islanders fisherman jersey makes a return. That plus our regular features, fake or authentic, and throwback throwdown. And of course, guests on this program, we have Thursday's writer, Sean. What's going on this week, Sean? Not too much. Enjoying the lovely Halifax winter that we always have this time of year. Mm. Uh, it's a nice jersey. The old Edmonton Oilers Reebok orange jersey. You know, the Jacques Plante era throwback or the original McDavid jersey, depending on how you want to look at it. <laughs> uh, a great name you can put on the back of this. You could put former Edmonton starter Cam Talbot. Nah. Magnus Pyarvi. Can't put Magnus Pyarvi on the back of this. Dave Semenko. You can do anything you if could you want. Put Dave Actually, I think they wore the. I think they wore this at his funeral. Like, that's so not a joke. Maybe that's not so like, classy. <laughs> the, the Dave Semenko funeral. Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, rest in, You could put Wayne Gretzky you, on. Yeah, he came out to center ice a few times wearing that jersey. I think you he... could also put, uh, as Ryan was saying before the podcast, uh, Kossikin or whatever his name is. Yeah, the that guy. Matt Stajan's number. <laughs> um, well, as you heard, also on the program, friend of the show, Beepo. What's going on, Beepo? Just recording a podcast, Ryan. Nice. Today's jersey is my new holy grail of my collection. Uh, just got it a couple days ago for my birthday. A game-worn Pascal Dupuis Minnesota Wild jersey. From the 2005-06 season. That's a good pickup. That's a very good pickup. So what do, what do you think of it? What do you think of the, uh, having a game-worn jersey in your collection? I've already, I already have a game-issued jersey in my collection. It's a Penguins one, Adidas. But it's very interesting how different the materials are. Like, they're similar. But at the same time, the, the Adidas one seems a little bit less stretchy. I don't really know how else to describe it. I'm not very good at describing fabrics, apparently. Well, the Adidas one is more tapered. They they took it in under the arms and that too. It does yeah. have it does have a different fit, but I mean, and this wild jersey has that mesh underarm, as I'm showing people with the video <laughs> feed right now. With the sixty five ninety nine an hour video feed, <laughs> yeah. But just having a game issued or team issued or game worn jersey in your collection, there's just this difference. It's it's a little bit indescribable. You can sit there and say it's heavier. The materials are different, but until you actually have one of these jerseys in your collection and you, and you get to uh, hold it and inspect it, it, it's really kind of something that you, you can't describe. And definitely, if if anyone listening has the opportunity to save up their money and get a team-issued or game-worn jersey, it is worth the money. Uh, take that chance, any chance you get. Sean, do you have any, any team-issued or, or game-worn jerseys in your collection? I do. I have a Josh Olsen, uh, I think it was 2003-2004, uh, Florida Panthers uh, game. Now, this is from the preseason, to the point where it actually has the mark on it where they taped the assistant captain's logo on it. <laughs> Josh Olsen, by the way, scored two NHL goals. Uh, one of them, I believe, was a game winner against the Montreal Canadiens during that year. Uh, but, you know... Decent, uh, decent AHL, a career AHLer, but you know it's kind of cool to have a Florida Panthers game worn jersey. Because fun fact, the numbers on that jersey are sewn inversely; they're concave. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very interesting sort of style there. Uh, then, yeah, you know it's kind of cool to see the board marks and the, uh, you know, because it's it, it's a it's a white jersey, so you can see like everywhere that this jersey hit, and it's like. You know, you, you wear it, and it's like, oh, man, I can see exactly where he got Gatorade on. This. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just going back to that number style. So, essentially, the classic way of doing – it's called twill. The, the classic way of doing twill numbers is layering. So, you do the your outside outline. That's the big layer on the bottom. And then you start layering up. But the new way that a lot of companies are starting to do it now because it saves on fabric is it you actually go – how Sean was describing inverse. So your, your inside number, the actual color of the number is your bottom layer. And then you kind of build up from that and you end up using less fabric. It's, it's just a cheaper way in the way uh, jerseys are trending and not really something that's good for a description 
on the podcast. And now that I've tried to do that and taken this thing completely off the rails, let's get started. I was coming up with the outline for this podcast of things we were going to talk about. It, it must have changed about three times because news just keep kept coming out constantly throughout the entire week. Uh, we got to start, though, with the most recent news, and that is Seattle becoming the 32nd NHL franchise. They'll begin play in 2021-22. Um, they're going to play at the uh, at the renovated Key, Key Arena. I almost called it Key Bank, but that's... That's Buffalo. They're going to play at the renovated Key Arena. Uh, Let's just start the rampant speculation and think about a name. What what should the Seattle team be called, John? Vegas 2, get out of my league. (laughs) You're already mad at them. They haven't even done anything. Because stupid Bill Daly comes on and says, well, we're just going to let them do what Vegas did. Fine, just give them their conference champion trophy already. You know, no, no, but you know what? I do have a hope that their GM won't be so short sighted. Uh, But in all seriousness, the name I want to go with, I'm sorry, I'm stuck on Seattle Metropolitans. Like, that is the OG original 1917 Stanley Cup champion. You know, I honestly hope they have a banner in that arena for it because realistically, like, you know, where else are they going to? And I don't think they should adopt the identity of the 1917 Metropolitans, but break it out for one game. It, yeah, well, I mean, that's a built-in outdoor game right there, right? So, oh, exactly. Vancouver versus or, you know, whatever. Uh, Totems is another option that I like. Totems comes I think out. That yeah. If you use the Totem logo, it, it actually go really nice with the Canucks sort of Haida art style uh, whale. You know, the only decent part about that logo was the actual whale part. So, you know. Uh, Beepo, I'm thinking I'm, I'm liking just more of an original name just because where we're at right now in the Jersey world with the, you know, the, the influx of retros, but I don't know where you're thinking with this Seattle team and what direction they should take their name. Honestly, I'm not really sure. There's not really one name that stands out to me as one that I love. And I think they definitely need to go with. I just, I don't think I'd be unhappy with too many of these options that they, that they have right now but it's, i think my favorites are probably kraken and maybe sea lions but that might just be because of some of the nice concepts we've seen for a sea lions team and maybe the seals but other than that i'm not really sure how i feel about the rest of them yeah the seals would be interesting i guess i like the kraken because of the potential for the logos um i know bob mckenzie on a leafs broadcast this past week said the seattle sasquatch would be a good name i do like that name just something, uh, I think something completely brand new would be good for, for this team. I also think green has to be in the color scheme. Now, I, I know we've seen a lot of branding uh, just from the Seattle group that contains a lot of red. But, I, I mean, it sounds like we're going to get red. But I really hope they, they reconsider and, and understand that this team kind of needs to be green, don't they, Sean? Well, let's look at the other um, franchises in Seattle right now. So you have the Seahawks, and they've had the same color scheme since whenever. You know, it's a navy or a royal blue with green, basically. And then you have the Mariners, same thing. But before that, they were blue and yellow. Uh, And then you had the old Supersonics in the NBA, and they had a they always had red and gold, and they added or they sorry green and gold, and they added red for a few years, and that looked all right. So, you know, it's not that red's completely out of bounds, but I'd really want it to be not a main color. Uh, I'm just getting up the old Seattle Totems color scheme. uh, And that was, well, it was red for a bit. But sort of that OG old school, like the native art style one from 1965 to 1974, that was green, black, and white. Yeah. And the team wore Detroit uh, copies. But, uh, you know, like you look at the Seattle Thunderbirds. Now, they wear, well, at this point, honestly, they've been wearing the Whalers colors almost, as, you know, longer than the actual Whalers did. Yeah. So at that point, it's theirs. But it's still green. I mean. Well, like... exactly. From 1986 to 1998, they wore green Whalers jerseys with darker colors and looked really good. So that's the color scheme I want would be the, the 90s Whalers colors. 
but with the green being, but with, with no gray and the green being the main color. Bebo, you're a fan of color. Uh, where should Seattle go with their look? If it's if they don't have green, we riot. <laughs> it's got to be green. They absolutely need green in some way, shape, or form, I think, or at least some unique color other than black and red. If it's just black and red, then I, they missed a huge opportunity. While Vegas isn't, like, full of color, they at least did something unique with the gold that they have, especially having it a metallic gold and the steel gray. If... Seattle just goes with red and green. It's really just red and black. I mean, it's really just a huge missed opportunity if they don't add something like green or teal or even just go green and teal in general. That's one of the ideas I was thinking of. Green and teal I think would look pretty nice. Yeah. Green, teal, white. Something unique. I think this this team really has the opportunity to be unique. I mean, Seattle as a city has some hockey history behind it, being the first American team to win the Stanley Cup. And then just the fact that they've, it seems like they've always been in the discussion to get a team. It seems like they've wanted a team for so long. And I think that's added to their hockey history. So they, they have that in their back pocket and then they can build on that with the option to do something completely new here. So yeah, for me, I'd like to see something completely new with the team uh, and with the color scheme. I, I want to see some form of green involved, but you can still do something unique that hasn't been seen in the NHL to this point but sticking on the topic of color carolina anaheim december 7th that may have already happened by the time you listen to this podcast they are going to have a color versus color game carolina is on the road uh, but for the california road trip they brought their home red jerseys anaheim has decided for that home game they're going to stick with their black jerseys so we are going to have a red versus black matchup and just is this I mean, I think this is pretty cool. Carolina's done this a lot in the preseason over the last few seasons, and it's really exciting that we get to see this one-off game here in the regular season, the one that actually counts, and there's going to be photo records of it that are easy to find. Uh, is, is this a cool idea, Beepo? 100%. I wish it were red versus blue, but I'll take what I can get, especially with uh, Carolina's gorgeous jersey. And Sean, what do you think here? I'm going to be the naysayer. I don't like it for one reason. Anaheim's jerseys clash with everything in the NHL. It looks <laughs> ugly. It's gross. I'm sorry, Anaheim, but you can't do color games. Like, like if, if Carolina rolls out with any other team, like Carolina versus Boston, gorgeous. Carolina versus L.A., gorgeous. Carolina versus San Jose, gorgeous. Carolina rolls out. Like, Anaheim's jerseys are so ugly when pitted in a color game it just doesn't work for me you know i mean well it's going to be interesting to see i mean with the just i just picture it like if if you're like playing nhl 19 and you know you're playing with someone's like i really like i don't like anaheim's away i want to play only as their home you're playing and you're just looking it's like it just looks like if you wore two kinds of plaid (laughs) or if you wore like green plaid pants and a red plaid shirt, and you just looked awful. Well, that's what Anaheim's going to do to this game. So I look like Anaheim right now because I am wearing two kinds of plaid. I got black and white plaid on my shirt, <laughs> and then uh, two kinds of blue and orange on my pants. So I know my wife's a huge fan when I wear two kinds of plaid. I always tell her it's her favorite outfit. But anyways, getting back to the on-ice apparel, um, is this opening the door for a future switch to this full-time is it opening the door for one-offs where where are we headed with this sean well i hope we're headed towards white at home but that's just you know (laughs) that's just me thinking uh you know back to the glory days of being seven uh no in all honesty i think that honestly in, in in taking the one positive thing you can say about the nba's jersey system is let the teams pick you know, like if, if if Detroit's traveling to New York, let them wear the red jerseys. You know, you know they want to wear the red jerseys. Let them wear it. It's like you know, it's the same thing with baseball. You know, if a team wants to rock the color jersey, they do that. Like, I think the NHL and is like the only league that really enforces that one team really has to wear white, and especially with the variety of alternate colors that we at least have in the NHL. We can have a lot of nice color games, like like a, a Washington Pittsburgh color game, you know, uh, a Vancouver 
the you know Boston color game. Chicago Carolina. Chicago oh, Carolina no. color game. Now we're talking. <laughs> Jeez, a, uh, a Vegas gets to mode the NHL or AHL uh, color game. You know that sort of thing. <laughs> and just drag Vegas into this for no reason. Yeah, I'm <laughs> mad at them. <laughs> well, I, obviously the reasoning that we probably would get anyways uh, from the NHL or teams about just uh, the, the, the structure, I guess, of the Jersey system is in the NHL is it's not just a Jersey, but you got to have the socks. Uh, so in some cases you got to have the proper gloves and pants and the helmet too. So it's not just a simple shirt change, right? We're talking uh, almost the, the entire equipment equipment. And that is probably why it's so structured, but uh, Beepo, where do you want to see this headed? I mean, uh, I know you're a fan of color. Uh, I would have to think you're probably on board for any kind of color versus color game, but should that should that be a regular thing in the NHL? 100%. I would love if the NHL adopted a ho- or a primary and clash system. I mean, some teams could have a, a white primary jersey if they really wanted to. I just, I really hope they do this. This is something that I would do in my own ideal NHL concept, which I may do a series on that if I have time in the future. But my per, my personal solution to the whole logistics thing of the fact that it would be annoying for a team to carry multiple uniforms with them, have the home team be the one who is to clash. Let the road team wear what they want, and unless there's a prior arrangement set up, let the home team clash. That way, they can also have a variety. The home team or the home fans can see both their dark and light jerseys, or if they have an alternate, alternate, and just let it so that way the home fans can see them all yeah, without the team having to choose that. It's not a really easy solution. Home team wears white. <laughs> That's actually... Or if the road team brings their white, the home team wears dark. Yeah, I kind of... I'm... Yeah, unless it's Vegas, then you don't let them in the building. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm take a, a huge, drink every time Sean brings yeah, Vegas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm a fan of structure. I I like structure. I like rules. But uh, I can I can definitely see where this is headed, and maybe it's not something that uh, is really worth fighting about uh, as far as the NHL heading to a a primaries and a clash system rather than a home and a home and road system. So I I do like Beepo solution actually where the the road team just shows up with whatever jersey and uh and then the home team just has to clash that. So I, I think that works, but uh until we get to that point, I'm happy sticking with a a home color and road white system with the occasional color versus color game. And uh that's where I'm okay for for now, but I can understand that uh I'm old, I'm cranky and things are going to change in the future. Let's get on to uh, going back t- uh, in time and talking about the New York Islanders Fisherman jersey, which is being released specifically for Islanders fans uh, at the Islanders team store. It's done by Fanatics, which is kind of a downer. So we have a fully sublimated Navy jersey here. It's pretty accurate as far as striping and colors go. They've done a nice job. Now, of course, with the Fanatics, you get the logos, which are pretty much printed on a piece of twill, and then that piece of twill is applied, uh, heat press applied to the jersey. So, I mean, it's fairly cheap. There's no texture to the logos, and they're going to charge you 150 160 for a jersey with no numbers on it. Um, just your thoughts, guys. Uh, Sean, we'll start with you on... Um, just the idea of this jersey coming back. Uh, I think we've touched on pr- in previous episodes. Who's a fan? Who's not a fan? So, uh, do you like that this jersey's coming back? Does this need to stop? And are you a fan enough of this jersey that you would, uh, if you had the means, make a trip to Long Island to pick one up? I like the idea of it coming back. I really wish we'd finally see it on ice. Like, like the Islanders are really, you know teasing us you're like oh are we gonna wear it i don't know where to practice you can buy it at the teen store just you wait <laughs> yeah but as a proud canadian fanatics hates us yeah fanatics can go to hell fanatics it's disgusting their jersey quality is almost as bad as reebok premier you know the only thing that uh fanatics goes with it is that i can rub myself up against the surface that is complete it isn't completely smooth and not worry about the arm of my jersey being shredded 
But you know what? Like, you know, would I make the trip to New York for it? No. Can buy one online for as much as it would cost in Canadian dollars. Like, geez, fanatics, you really hate Canada, don't you? Like, 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 really though, can fanatics hates Canada? And you know what? I'm saying it now. We need to. We need to. We need to. You know, as Canadians, you know, just just tell fanatics off. Tell the NHL shop Canada off. Yeah, fanat- no, fanatics does not run a good Canadian shop. I mean, just support your local jersey store, whatever it is. That's guys true. That are because I know that you know this is the chance to talk about this. Uh, the guys over at Sports K, you know, we like them. We've all bought stuff from them. Yeah, gotta love Sports so, K. Uh, fanatics f them over. Um, How so? What happened there? It was on the NFL side of things, but the they reported them as a fraudulent jersey provider, which is funny because Sports K, you know, they get reported, but the guys on eBay or on Facebook selling twenty nine ninety five. Oh yeah, they're. Uh, obvious things they're not the ones getting reported no no it's sports gay you know why because they offer things at a decent price even in american dollars compared to canadian they yeah. still offer things at a good price i bought tons of jerseys from sports K. they're definitely not fake they are a great they do a good job of what they're doing support guys like them uh they started you know, michigan yeah yeah they're out of michigan they do a good job and like you know it's just you know especially in canada if you can find a, you know guys like ice jerseys and cool hockey you got to give them the, the business because if you don't, then Fanatics wins. And if Fanatics wins, Canada loses. <laughs> Sports Jerseys Canada, another good spot to get. They're great. Yeah. Yeah, to give get give love to your local small jersey provider. That's yeah. the message of today. But NHLshop.ca is just awful. I mean, if you look at the selection that is offered on the American site, there's about, uh, so if you're looking at, let's say, Buffalo Sabres hats, there's about 30 options. And if you go on the Canadian version, Fanatics is only willing to offer you one or two options uh, of the same team and hats. So, and, and what are their selling points? Ships from Canada. <laughs> yeah. Wide selection, no tariffs. It's like, ooh, well, two of those are false. And, uh, you know, they ship out of Burlington, which yeah. is a suburb of Toronto. <laughs> so, you know, there's no excuse for it to cost what it does to ship it to you. Just uh, with- And, yeah, like... Go look at the jersey selection on there. That's awful. Half the teams don't even have their roads up. I know. We've gotten off on a bit of a tangent here trying to talk about the Islanders' fisherman jersey. But, Beepo, are uh, are you a fan of this jersey? What do you think of this re-release by Fanatics? And if you had the means, are you enough of a fan to make a trip to go get it? I want to see it come back in a game. I really want to see it come back in a game. Not just warm ups, not just a just not just the logo on your practice jerseys. A full game in this jersey. But for bringing it back as it is, I'm relatively okay with it. I I'm not okay with the way that Fanatics handled it, you know, with the whole manufacturing and the materials and all. That's I mean, that's just awful. But I we've talked about that part enough. Um I, I, I mean, is it really that much different from the rest of the vintage jersey lines, though? Aside from the infamy of this jersey, I think if like so, the the feel of it is is going to be different because Fanatics just makes their jerseys differently, and then of course the patches are just like a printed a printed piece of twill rather than embroidered or anything like that. So that's the well, big I mean, difference like there. The, the concept of bringing back an old jersey just for retail is it really any different than the ccm vintage line during the reebok edge era no no fanatics is I mean, just, really just taking bringing that over. back a jersey for retail sale which yeah. is really just a money grab but it has been the whole time and that's what jerseys I, are i wouldn't hate getting my hands on one of these but i definitely wouldn't go all the way to long island for one without it. And another reason to go there like if I went there to see a game, I'd, I'd be like, okay, I'll pick one up, sure. Well, that's I'm what I'm saying. Go that out there just for this. If you have the means, by me saying that is, if yes, if you had the means to go to Long Island to see the, in your instance, the Penguins play the Islanders at NASA or whatever they're calling it now, uh, and pick up one of these jerseys, would you? And for me, um, if like if the Leafs were playing the Islanders, uh, I would make that trip regard regardless if I could. But I don't know. I would seriously have to debate picking one of these up because 160 or 150, whatever they're charging for, no number. And the patches are the killer because there's so much detail in that Fisherman logo that I would kind of want the embroidered one. So maybe it's just a matter of uh, not spending money on going to Long Island and saving that money to get 
uh, to get a good eBay version and, and of course overpaying for it. But I think that's just, yeah, would, that's sorry, just where I'm headed with this jersey. Go ahead, people. I would debatably just pick one up to have it and then keep looking out for a better embroidered version of it. And then if I get that one, sell the one that I bought. Yeah, I like, don't know. You know, if, sell the Fanatics version. I wonder if the Fanatics version is going to have any buyback value. Like, I wonder if enough people want this and this version of it uh, and to buy it back at face or if you take a loss on it. That would be very interesting to find out. Buy the Fanatics version, rip off the front logo, and buy just the patch for the front logo. Put that on. <laughs> <laughs> um, put it right on top. So this, I... I'm thinking this is, I personally think this is a test run for a future release. See how it goes on Long Island. And then the next step is uh, is online jersey sales, I think. I don't know what you guys think. John, we'll start with you. Is this a test run for a further release? Uh, I I don't think so. It would have made a larger release. I think if they're going to do it, they're going to do it. Just like to mention... Sabres hats available on NHLshop.ca. <laughs> Six. Hats available on, on shop.nhl.com for you Americans. 135. 135 My hats. Ava- for, and this is just you Buffalo really Sabres. Right. <laughs> this is just the Buffalo Sabres. So. <laughs> What's it like for the Canadian team? Let's find. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Okay. Let's pick Toronto. Okay. Go yeah, with Toronto. I'm going to do too. Here we go. Who would you say is the second most popular Canadian team? Montreal. For them? Montreal. All right. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So Number of hats available on shop.nhl.com for the Toronto Maple Leafs. 197. 197 hats available for American shoppers. This for is, Canadians? This is run by 36. Fanatics. 36. 36 leaf hats available for Canadian shoppers. You hate us. 197. Oh, no, no, no. That's it. I'm taking this to Twitter. I'm calling you out right now. <laughs> this is disgusting. I can't deal with this anymore. Beepo, you got so some numbers for Fnatic Montreal? So basically, strategy is sell less stuff to the rabid fan base of Toronto. And oversaturate then, the market for for then, less of a desire in the States. That's I mean, it. That's it. In, We're doing this. This is going on Twitter. Be, the funny thing is... <laughs> NHL shop. The funny thing is, before Fanatics yeah, took too. over a couple of years ago... NHL shop realized what the deal was and moved a lot of their products that and made them available to ship within Canada or at least found a factory that could produce them uh, and ship them from Canada. So NHL shop before fanatics took over realized what needed to be done. And then of course they gave the contract to fanatics and we just all have to accept the, the crap that is, but I don't think that's changing anytime soon because it took, NHL shop maybe about 10 years to get to that point. So who knows how long it'll take fanatics. We've got 282 Canadians hats in the American shop and I cannot load the Canadian shop. (laughs) (laughs) Take, take a look. Muted Sean. Let's try and go straight from the website. I can't, I can't even get on the shop. Do Americans really need, do Americans really need NHL.ca? Uh, NHL shop.ca. Oh, NHL yeah. shop.ca, but you can just open up another tab of NHL shop.com and switch the currencies. So do Americans really need 282 Montreal Canadians hat options? Like I maybe understand the Rangers, the Flyers, the Penguins at those numbers. 98. The, 98. 98. Uh, on the Canadian store. That's not bad. It's not 282, but 98 is not bad. So fanatics in conclusion, you suck, you know it, and you don't care. I tweeted them. I said, seriously, at Fanatics, do y'all hate Canada or just don't want to offer us even a fourth of the selection that the U.S. customers have? It's a Canadian team. <laughs> Next week, let us know if they ignore you or not. In the meantime, let's get to Throwback Throwdown. This week on Throwback Throwdown, we're going to be looking at the Carolina Hurricanes. We're going to be looking at their inaugural jersey from 1997. And then we're going to fast forward 20 years and go up against their Adidas version from 2017. So looking at the 97 version, we have a big white stripe on the arm. 
outlined by a thin silver stripe on top and black cuffs on the bottom. Uh, they've had their logo consistent for their entire existence, which you know. We have the uh, hurricane warning flag pattern on the hem, uh, outlined in white stripes on the top is a silver stripe. On the bottom is a black stripe. This is the more rounded, italicized font. If we're moving to 2017 and the Adidas release, we kind of go back to a similar hem stripe style. Uh, this time we have the sublimated hurricane warning flag pattern uh, outlined in white and then outlined in black, both on top and the bottom. And that striping pattern repeats on the sleeves. We have a black collar here and now we have tie down laces. Uh, we have a more, what is it called? Sans serif font uh, with more straight edges rather than rounded and italicized. Uh, I'm sure by, if you're listening to this podcast, you're familiar with the Adidas Hurricanes jersey. So, Sean, let's uh, start off with you and the 1997 review of the Carolina Hurricanes red jersey. Jersey was actually pretty ahead of its time, I think. Uh, I actually don't believe that this jersey existed in 1997. Uh, it would have looked really ahead of its time that year. You know, the race car style numbers were a new thing. They actually looked kind of good. They went with the whole thing that's going on here. There's a lot of white and black going on. Uh, that, that pops a lot. Uh, I think that for the era, the logo was something new, nice and fresh. Uh, overall, yeah, it's just, it's one of those things that for a certain period of time, it hasn't aged particularly well, but you know, when it was released, I could really see how this was the direction the NHL seemed to be heading in and, you know, a little bit of optimism on that part. Beepo thoughts on the 97, the inaugural season. Hurricanes red jersey. Yeah, I have to agree with Sean that it may have been a little bit ahead of, ahead of its time, but it hasn't aged super well. It was a great jersey for them to take the ice in, and it fit the 90s aesthetic without being too in your face like the 90s are also known for with that warning flag pattern. And yeah. the warning flag pattern was just a great way to tie in the name of the team and the identity of the team into their jersey striping without, you know, just doing your normal colors and your normal blocks of color. Um, but I, again, the color is great on it. I'm not huge on the gray. I, I'm usually not huge on gray in jerseys unless it's the primary. Um, but I, I do have some good memories of the very similar Reebok Edge counterparts uh, being swept by the Pittsburgh Penguins on route to their 2009 Stanley Cup. <laughs> but overall, these are some pretty nice jerseys, I think. Yeah, I I agree with Sean that uh these were kind of a little bit ahead of their time. I thought the uh the striping, the hurricane warning striping pattern really could have led to something. Um the numbers, the rounded italicized numbers kind of really helped this be outdated as do the just general mishmashing of stripes not matching here. Uh help towards it, but it certainly could have been worse. We're looking at you Phoenix and everyone else in the alternate jersey program of the mid nineties, but um it it it's like it's like trying to be loud but contained in a box. So it's really not that loud. Uh but again, I agree with Sean with it being ahead of its time. Let's go to the 2017 version, and maybe this is how the jersey should have looked all along. This is what I think, anyways. Um love the colors on this, love the sublimated uh warning flag pattern in the big red stripe. But uh, what do you guys think? Beepo, we'll start off with you with the Adidas 2017 version. Absolutely beautiful. I honestly think it's the best jersey they've ever worn in their history. The red, the black, it, the, okay, let the, this is a pretty much what their original reband should have been. And it was a huge improvement on it. It took that original rebrand jersey that had just that white striping on it and did everything that it needed. It added the, enough black. The black looks incredible against the red and the white. It kept those white stripes, which fit really well. It looks different from any other NHL team, and that sublimated uh, 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 in the sublimated warning flags in that stripe are just perfect. It's taking that 90s jersey as well, toning it down to fit the modern age perfectly. And I wish their road jersey had that sublimated pattern as well. And if so, it would probably be one of the better sets in the NHL. But that road jersey is just a little bit off. But the home jersey, incredible. 
Sean, what do you think of the Adidas 2017 home jersey? Man, this jersey just it's just how do I put it? It's it's just gorgeous, you know? <laughs> like I look at it and I just see absolute beauty in it. I just see you manage to take something so old, so worn out, and you bred new life into it. My goodness. The new font, the amount of black, the sublimated pattern. You hit all the notes. You didn't even need a shoulder patch, and yet I feel like nothing's missing. You made the Adidas collar work. You even put a tie down on a team that isn't even 25 years old. Mm. So poignant, so fine, refined for the modern man. In fact, dare I say, it is the best jersey the team has ever worn, if not the best one in the NHL. That was Reflections with Sean. Here on <laughs> here on the Jersey Nerds AM radio network. Well said, Sean. <laughs> this is a great jersey. Um, I can't really find too much fault with it. I would like something a little more interesting in the numbers, but this the current number style does work with the jersey. Uh, I don't think it needs a laced collar. I think they could have done uh, used the Adidas collar and done something really, really interesting with it. But it doesn't take away from the jersey, the fact that it is a laced collar. So uh, I feel like we're headed for a clean sweep here, but let's make it official. I'm choosing the 2017 version. Uh, Reflections with Sean, who are you choosing? Well, if you didn't guess by my AM smooth jazz, <laughs> I have to give this to have to give this to 2017. Just, my God. Just, just, just imagine the jersey is like a beautiful blonde, you know, it just hits every note you're looking at and you're really, you're really just looking at thinking, my God, you would exist. It's like a gorgeous hooker. Who's brought a really big bag of blow with her. It just hits all the notes. <laughs> Beepo, uh, is this a clean sweep? 1997. <laughs> it's my loser. <laughs> well played, sir. Well 2017. played. 2017 is obviously the winner. Could you tell by how I was rambling on about 2017 the way I was? Yeah, 20 the 2017 jersey, it's a little it's more organized, uh but it also just it looks better. So it 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 did have more thoughts attached to it. So uh with the clean lady in your life and want to impress her for Christmas, forget that diamond ring. Sebastian <laughs> Aho collection provides you a beautiful jersey Wouldn't it be, in lady sizes. What, Sean, you should make, you know, people's jewelers. I don't know if that's just Canadian, but it had like the classic violin music and everything was done in, in silhouettes and, and they would wear the jewelry. We should have commercials like that, except they're wearing hockey jerseys. <laughs> Carolina Hurricanes for I her. I want a diamond ring this year. <laughs> I want home. You'll need him. <laughs> an Adidas 52 New York Rangers. All right. That was uh, throwback throwdown. Carolina's Adidas version taking the clean sweep in this one. And now we got to move on to fake or authentic. Fake or authentic. Fake or authentic, this is where I've come up with three statements, but it's up to the guys to determine whether or not they are, just like the jerseys you see around the NHL arenas, fake or authentic. Here we go, fake or authentic statement number one, and this might be going going back a little, a little too far for you guys, but you've seen pictures, so we'll see. Fake or authentic, Wayne Gretzky using blue blade holders on his skates looked better than the black ones. Fake or authentic, Sean? Probably authentic. I mean, I can't say anything positive about Wayne Gretzky just because of uh, certain events in the 1993 season. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, it's a nice idea. It was kind of ahead of its time because, if I'm not mistaken, nowadays teams tend to have color-matching ones. Well, not a lot of people do it, right? Like, since Gretzky's been out. I'm talking the blade holders, right? So you got the boot. You got the blade yeah. on the bottom, obviously, and then there's the holder oh, there. Oh, I see. The, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. Sorry, I was thinking. I was thinking skate guard for a second. I was like, most teams match them. No, right. So Gretzky yeah, wore the blue the blade holders. With that is that a lot of the teams that when Gretzky did it, it was kind of cool. But like the teams that messed with skate design, 
generally speaking, we're not successful. I'm looking at you, California. Like, <laughs> like it just like between the like that. Honestly, the '70s ruined any hope we had of color coded skates because between the New York Golden Blades and the California Golden Seals and all that mess, you know, it's like you know, it's just it's hocked up to its campiness from 45 years ago. And I mean, it, the the black blade holders kind of gained steam in the mid '90s. There were several players several players wearing them but now if you showed up with blue skate blade holders and you're skating around the ice sure enough you're gonna get a comment like hey Gretzky nice shot or something like that so I just think because Gretzky did it I don't know if anyone else uh is gonna have the balls to go ahead and do it Beepo uh faker authentic Gretzky looked better using blue skate blade holders rather than black I'm going to say fake. Uh, I mean, you're right in that I haven't seen too many pictures of or uh, that I'm, I wasn't around for the time, and I haven't seen too, too many pictures of it. But the ones that I am seeing with the blue skate holders, they just stand out. Like, they just stick out like a sore thumb. And whenever they're black, I mean, of course, in some of the cases, it was with L.A., so it matched the color scheme. But even if it doesn't match the color scheme, you're used to seeing black down by the skates because skates are black. And if you see black skate or the holders as well, it's not really going to stick out because you're just kind of used to seeing black down there. The blue ones just stick out in a really weird way. And it's weird that I actually never noticed this until this question. I think I've noticed it at some point, but I never really, it was never like embedded into my brain. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I remember as a kid, uh, I grew up with, with, uh, with Gretzky on the Oilers for about five or six years or so. And, um, but maybe only two that I can actually remember, but either way, I remember being a kid and wanting skates with blue blade holders and never being able to find them. But I'm kind of glad now that I never was able to find them because, uh, I definitely, (laughs) I definitely think I would have been hearing it, uh, skating around with blue blade holders during my little, my little house league games there. Let's go to Faker authentic number two. The flexible Fanatics crests, the, we're talking primary crests, are a better option than the shoulder crests, the plastic shoulder crests on the Reebok Premier jerseys. Sean Faker, authentic. 400% authentic. Because, my God, I re, you know, I just every year I realize how cheap Reebok Premier jerseys actually are. They aren't. They aren't, they aren't nice jerseys, and one of the reasons is that you have to damn well wash those things inside out. Especially if it's like a San Jose or a Tampa Bay where it's got the metallic on it, rubs off in the wash. Even if you do it inside out, it'll still do that. And it's like, you know, you are eventually going to have to wash your jerseys. That's a fact. You don't want to smell. Smelling's bad. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, this, I never had this problem with CCM. No. I don't even really have a – because the thing is that the, the logos, even the primary logos on the uh, CCM jerseys, they wash fine. Like they they might get a little creased or folded, but they'll eventually even out to a nice worn. Reebok jerseys never get there. They always – if you have like this Oilers right here, this has a fold here, like down by the hem. That folds in there forever. Yeah. Versus I got CCM jerseys there. Yeah. You know, the, the you know when I got that uh, Calgary Flames 1997 jersey from the Ukraine – Crest was beat to hell. Put it in the wash a few times, let it flat dry. It looks old, but it doesn't look, you know, crumpled up like it was when I got sent it. So, you know, I mean, they've clearly taken a step backwards and does making the crest more flexible for your average fan a good idea? Yeah, probably, honestly. You know, I mean, you won't have to keep a baby there like Fanatic seems to (laughs) think you do in that now famous ad. But That's what we were asking for. Everyone was asking for baby-friendly jerseys. So, Beepo, fake or authentic, the flexible Fanatics crests are a better option than the plastic Reebok shoulder patches. Authentic for sure. And I believe that this uh, this fake or authentic is a bit of a uh, play on what I sent in the Slack chat recommending you as fake or authentic in that my version would have that Reebok material on the shoulder patches also on the front crest of the jersey. Not just the shoulder patches, but authentic either way. I mean, at least the Fanatics version somewhat resembles fabric or, you know, uh, embroidery. It's not just literally plastic. And I'm not sure as to how it holds up in the wash, but as we've heard uh, from Sean, the Reebok does not. So 
definitely going to go with Fanatics, but if you can, get yourself a game issued or game used and get yourself some nice uh, embroidered patches. Well, as far as washing goes, the, the horror stories that I've heard with Reebok and those terrible plastic uh, shoulder patches are that eventually the print wore away. Like it, it would just become uh, a one solid color and, and it wore away as if you just sat there kind of rubbing it with an eraser forever. The thing that I worry about with the Fanatics jerseys, because everything's just heat pressed on, is that over time, if you wash it too much, those patches are going to start falling off. I mean, they're they're pretty close. Like I have an Arenas Fanatics jersey, a Toronto Arenas Fanatics jersey. And those sharp edges on, on the letters, uh, I feel like they would be very easy to pick off. And again, they're just heat press. So uh, uh, either- I've had problems with that with an Atlanta Thrashers Edge jersey and a Canucks pre-edge jersey. The thing about the CCM jerseys is that you can sew them back on, honestly, by yourself. Like, yeah. you know, you just find a similar thread color, just sew them right in. Reebok, again, same thing. This material just looks like if you tried to sew it back on. It stick out like a sore thumb. So my advice on that is if it doesn't have a name on it already, when you go to take it into the guy, ask him, you know, for 10 bucks, would you just run this under the machine and sew it back on so it doesn't come off? Yeah, definitely. And definitely worth asking because a lot of people, a lot of people will do it. All right. Faker Authentic number three. I would accept a $300 price tag for a blank jersey that was to the exact same specifications As the on ice jerseys. Now consider this as a replacement option for what Adidas sells as authentic. That's just a name now authentic. So instead of that, I would accept a $300 price tag for a blank Jersey that had the exact same specifications as the on ice jerseys. Sean Faker authentic. Oh wait, can I, can I ask a question to clarify real quick? Do you mean this would be offered by the NHL and Adidas as another retail line? Instead or of like a one-time offer. No, instead basically. of the line of authentics, which are sold under the name authentics, but they do not accurately match what is on the ice. They're just kind of a they're kind of a glorified Reebok Premier, but w- and with a oh, with a tie down. I know they're better than that, but they're it's, better than a Premier, but they're not nearly on ice. That's authentic. correct. That's correct. Yeah. They're they're like a supersized Premier with a tie down. So instead of that option as like the on sale retail option, the, this option that I'm proposing is a $300 price tag for a blank Jersey. That is to the exact same specifications as the on ice Jersey. So we'll start with Sean while Beepo contemplates fake or authentic. Absolute fake. Because at that point, I'll pay for an on-ice jersey. Like, I'll pay for the actual thing. I actually quite like the Adidas Authentic jersey. I think they do a good enough job. They're a little high in price. But you know what? To be fair, you'll find that with that, you'll the, the customization jobs are a lot better. Uh, I like what the, I like the way that the uh, the crests are done. Uh, I like the way the shoulder patch is done, actually. It's a weird mix of printing thread color to patches and everything sort of sewn in together. And then sewn on as opposed to the previous shoulder patches where, like, details stuck out. They're smooth, but the detail is still sewn on. I actually really like that. My Columbus Panarin jersey, you know, it has the um, the perforated numbers. That actually, I really like that. So, um, you know, I'm going to say I'm happy with where I'm at. I don't want the Reebok Authentics back. Those weren't actually that good. And overall, it's just kind of like I want to be able to wear my jerseys. You know, that's why I don't have many game worns is that, you know, I want to wear the jerseys. I wear them all the time, you know, it's something kind of known for. So, you know, I don't think I'd wear a $300 jersey. Like, who wears the $300 articles of clothing that you can't get dirty? Fair enough. It, it would be it would be a, a, an expensive piece with a uh, – would need a delicate touch. Beepo, have you thought about it? Fake or authentic on this one? If it were offered in addition to the current Fanatics and Adidas Authentic line, I definitely Authentic. Why not have that extra option for whenever you feel like splurging out a little bit more and getting a better quality? But if it were to replace the Adidas Authentics, I'd definitely say fake just because of that hefty price tag. And it would definitely keep my jersey collection from expanding in the way that it does now. Um, Despite the better quality the collection would be, 
I wouldn't be able to easily obtain as many jerseys. And like Sean said, I would be a lot more hesitant to actually wear it if it were that expensive as opposed to some of the ones that I have now. So I guess technically my answer is both, or it just depends on which the situation is. Classic fence sitter. Way to go, people. (laughs) All right. So um, this is actually, these are pretty good topics. Talking about the Gretzky blue blade holders, the flexible fanatics crests, and a three hundred dollar uh, price tag for a jersey that matched the on ice specifications. So for the listeners, we want to hear from you too. What you think about these jerseys? You can get us on Twitter at hockeyjc. Use the hashtag Faker Authentic, or if you want to, you can email us podcast at hockey jersey concepts. And uh, next week we'll read uh, we'll read some of the good thoughts that come in. And of course, you can get involved in anything we talked about. Let's hear what you guys think about the Seattle franchise. Uh, what it should be called, what colors they should be using. Let us know what you think about uh, Caroline and Anaheim doing a color versus color game and where you think that's headed in the future. And if you would uh, make an effort to go pick up the New York Islanders Fanatics Fisherman jersey. Again, you can get us at HockeyJC or email the podcast directly, podcast at HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. On the blog, HockeyJerseyConcepts.com, This past weekend, we announced changes that are coming up uh, to the blog in 2019. We're going to be focusing a lot on competitions. That's where the concept content is going to come from. Schedule for competitions is pretty much going to stay the same. You're going to get a little bit of an advanced notice as to what competition is coming up. Uh, But uh, not too much is going to change there. We're going to be more focused on news and the podcast. We hope to uh, expand the podcast a little bit and maybe make it more of a, a podcast network. The daily concept posts are is the thing that is going away. Uh, it's just not working on HJC right now. It's not working for me. It's just something that uh, that needs to go away and will be going away in 2019. So by the time you hear this podcast, if you submit any concepts to Hockey Jersey Concepts, uh, they're not guaranteed to be posted. The last daily concept post is December 27th. Who knows? We may have a, a big concept blowout that day. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, going on on the blog, the competition right now is the 2019 All-Star Competition. That's where you can come up with uh, designs for the upcoming All-Star Game. Uh, that goes until, oh, i got to pull up my calendar here. So entries are due December, what are we looking at, four, 14th by noon Eastern. Uh, the vote will conclude December 21st at noon Eastern. And, of course, we have the weekly Concept of the Week vote going on on HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. Uh, Sean, Beepo, anything to add to that? Anything interesting going on? Obviously not. Okay, that's good to hear. Good stuff there. You're from... welcome, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta, gotta, gotta keep with tradition, not say anything during that awkward uh, for the last, but uh, yeah, looking looking really forward to the changes in 2019. You know, as the longest non Ryan member of the HJC uh, team, I can safely say that you know the C in HJC will probably change to hockey jersey content. I think <laughs> is what we're going to change it to. Uh, you know, I, I'm happy that the six and a half, nearly seven years I've been on the blog has been reviewing concepts, but. I've, I've, I've fallen in love with the idea of podcasting now. It's something I really am passionate about right now. I'm on almost every week for a reason. Uh, and, and, you know, after six and a half years of reviewing concepts, you want to try something new, and this is what you want. we want to do. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I know that it's going to be hard uh, to, to switch that up, you know, but I, I think it's, uh, it's a good time to do it. Uh, and overall, I hope that, you know, everybody who's read HJC for any number of years continues to read and continues to listen to this because without you, the people, HJC is just seven or eight guys in various basements across Canada and the United States ranting into their computer microphones about shirts that, um, you know, aggressive figure skaters wear. <laughs> well that said, Sean. Exist. Yeah, well said, Sean. But, uh, you know, obviously change is difficult for anybody. Uh, This is just going to – it's just something that's happening because 
Um, go at this point, we we can't provide uh, quality content as far as daily daily posts go, and um, it's going to be hard for some people. Some people are embracing it, and that's uh, that's that that would come with any change. But uh, that's just the direction HJC is headed in. Um, to provide you quality content, I think you got to have you got to have a passion for it, and I think I've just lost the passion for those daily concepts. Um, and maybe there's someone else out there who hasn't lost that passion and, and good for you. So, the, you know, one door closes, another door opens, but if you want to pick up where we left off, do it. That like, door is if, open if now. You, if, if you really think that cons, if you, if you love the daily concept post and you want to do it, there was a day where almost every artist on HJC had their own personal blog. <laughs> There was a day, and there was a there were days that every month Ryan would have to plug someone's blog. That's so you know true. what? If you want to make the next, if you want to make the spinoff HJC, if you want to make the Joey to our friends, the Cleveland show to our family guy, except a little better, the Fraser to it. our cheers, the Fraser to our cheers. And if you want to make the Fraser to our cheers, do it. Doors open. Have our blessing. I remember a few years ago, Ryan had to tell me to stop promoting my own blog on HJC. Oh, so I did it like I did it like two or three weeks straight on my posts. Oh, was this when you were a writer? Yeah, this was a while back. <laughs> when I was handing out helpful hints. And then I did next to nothing on that blog. <laughs> we used to we used to have uh, guys who would leave their blog URLs in the comments and Ryan would come and he'd be like, don't leave your blog URL in the comments. I'll plug your blog in the, in the Sunday post. That, well, hey, that's what it became. <laughs> yeah, check out my mixtape. All right, so those are the changes coming up to HJC. Uh, I'm personally looking forward to them. I think it's just uh, just the blog maturing and, and we're going to provide some some quality content, but some different content. So we're coming that, for you, bar down. We're coming for you. <laughs> we're not coming for anybody. We're just HJC, and uh, <laughs> but seriously, look out, bar down. No, I'm just joking. Uh, that's what we got for you this week. Again, we want you guys to get involved in what we talked about. So the best way to get a hold of us on Twitter at hockeyjc or email the podcast podcast at HockeyJerseyConcepts.com. Now, the best thing you can do for this podcast is share it with the people you know. Share it with your friends. Spread the word about it. And that is the absolute best way to grow the podcast. Once we can start growing the podcast, we might be able to start growing the podcast network. And uh, hopefully, we'll just get more and more people listening. And of course, the more people that listen, in, the better the content we can provide. So uh, share the podcast. Also, be sure to like uh, download, subscribe, share, stream, whatever you got to do. Listen to the Jersey Nerds podcast. So again, I want to thank Sean. I want to thank people. I want to thank you, the listeners. You're welcome, Ryan. <laughs> Spot hey. on, right on time there, people. Anyways, thanks everybody for listening, and we'll talk to you guys again next week.